Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games and day 26 of the 30 day challenge. I didn't get much done on day 25, so I thought I'd just combine the videos. So this really is day 25 and day 26 combined. I ended up staying up later and later as the challenge was getting on to get that painting finished. And for that last day, I went through the night. So yeah, so really I was painting for like two days. So I just bundled it all in. But with the painting finished, now I've started work on building the fang. And so I thought the first stage was to draw it all out on some cardboard. But then I thought, why not just build a mock-up of it out of cardboard to get an idea of the size and scale. And then that'll give me like a, a rough draft. So when I go to make it out of all the foam, I've almost had a go already and got a good idea of how big this is going to be. So let's head to the table and it's looking completely different now. The army's pushed right out the way, all finished. And now is this... Crazy mock-up, all made of cardboard. Now this isn't going to be anything like the finished model. This is really just to give me an idea of the size and exactly um, how all the components are going to fit together. So I just roughly glued together these different cardboard pieces and it's almost the right size. It's a little bit too tall. So I've just got to reduce some of the different levels inside. And when we flip it around, you can see that it's going to be a display piece for all the army. So all the models are going to have their own section within it. And this relates to the law of the fang itself. So I'll talk a little bit about that as we go through the video too. So I just started drawing it out on some cardboard on the table and then I thought, why don't I just make it? So I just got some card and put it together just in this rough way and used some crumpled up paper just to give an idea of where all the rocks are going to go. Because I want this to be like part building, part rock. So it's coming out of the mountain. The fang has got two gate entrances, one each side, and it's also got a large walkway, like bridge going through it. And it's six meters wide with no like banisters each side. So completely open. So I thought it'd be cool to incorporate that into the build as well. I also want to build some kind of entrance down the bottom here. So this is going to be a lot of rock and it's also going to be some industrial material as like a wall, but then a gate that can open and close. But a lot of it is going to be kind of rock going up here, especially as you get to these bits that are jutting out. And so I just wanted to get an idea in my head roughly of where that's going to be. And then just to give you an idea of the size of this, I've made it 44 inches wide. So this is going to be great if we're playing a combat patrol game. It'd be 44 inches by 30 inches on the board. And this piece will go right at the back and be a really nice backdrop. When I do the rule series, that's the main purpose of having the front of this done. But also if I want to go for a bigger game, I can make the board 44 by 60 inches and then just slide it back. And it all still fits on the gaming table as a really cool backdrop. I also want elements of this to be able to be used in gameplay. So potentially it could be part of a board, maybe create a narrative scenario to play out. And, you know, there's going to be an entrance here, one of the gates where the vehicles can come out onto this tall bridge. So that's going to be fun as well. Maybe we can get some units shooting down from there. Um, but yeah, really want to make use of this. And having those two arches could also be two ways where vehicles can enter or like troops can come in onto the battlefield, that kind of thing. But I love seeing this convoy leaving the gate at the top. But also this gate at the bottom can be opened and we can maybe get the wolves coming out, even some other vehicles. I think that'd be quite fun. So yeah, I definitely want to incorporate as much as I can into this so we could use it as part of a game. And on the different levels, there's going to be like shooting posts and things like that. Maybe some light cover and things that they can shoot from. And I saw a battle report on Warhammer Plus when I had it for Kill Team. And they used a large piece of terrain like that for one of the battles. And I think that worked really nicely. But when it's not being used for a battle, I've just spun it around now. It's really going to be a display piece for the whole army to go in. So I thought rather than just building a boring set of shelves, I could do something like this. So at the bottom, this is going to be like the cargo hold. I'm also going to do some geothermic generators down there. And this is where all the energy from the fang comes from. So I thought I could do some generators. Part of this is going to be walled off from the other side, from the front. Um, but so yeah, so be half will be like cargo area. Maybe we can put another bigger vehicle when I get it. And then on the other side, I'll have that geothermic generator. Then this level is going to be the halls of the fallen and borex seal. And there's going to be some turbo lifts just coming through here. And this is where the dreadnoughts will keep be kept throughout their stay in the fang. So yeah, this is that area. So I want to build it so that they can be kept in there. 
Then that next level above them is where I'm going to keep all the vehicles and I want to make room in case I get a couple of extra ones. So make sure I can fit maybe six vehicles all together on that level and then that's where that gate is going to go which can open up and they can come out. This next section is going to be a lot taller and this is going to represent the Fang Thane but I also want to double it up as the Chamber Annulus and the Chamber Annulus is where the 12 Yars will meet and like there will be that circle of all the different companies will go on the floor. So I want to represent that circle here, but have the big tall walls going up with the archways, maybe put some statue banners, that kind of thing. So this is going to be a real big feature. I probably won't get all the details done during this build. So the main thing with this is just to get the, the shell of it done and make it look you know, like it's a frosty mountain monastery or kind of fortress. And then all the details I can add later on as I grow the army. One of my favourite models from this army is Aryak Rockfist and he's in the forges but he's got his own forge room so I want to create that and it's a very simple room it's described as just having an anvil, hammer, uh, a couple of buckets that kind of thing so not an awful lot going on in there but I thought it'd be fun to kind of give him his own room. I might make it a little bit smaller um, I might even put it down on one of the other levels but I'm thinking it could be quite cool there in that little space. Then I want to do it just above him. I want to use that as like a landing area for the Stormfang gunship. So I want to position that up there. So that would be quite cool. So you could see it from the front as well as the back. I also want to make one area to be the chamber of the watch. And this is the control center where everything takes place. So I thought that'd be quite fun. We could really get some nice details going on in that. So I thought that would be pretty cool. Then at the top, there's this section. I thought it might be cool to put it into two layers or levels and have one level as the Fleshmaker Laboratorium. And this will be housing the Iron Priest, which I don't have yet, but really want to get. And then maybe make the other room into something else. This might be where I put Ardiac, actually, and then do something else with the room down below. I might incorporate something else, like a kind of trophy room or something. That might be quite fun. So there we are, that's step one of this process for building the fan. I've got four days left now to get on with this, and I think doing the cardboard was a good move. It really gave me an idea of the scale. I want to reduce it a little bit, make it not quite so tall. It's almost four foot, so I want to bring it down to three foot, so that would be a nicer size. I want to keep that bridge quite high, though, because I like that piece. And yeah, so that's what I'm looking at. And I've got all this foam ready now, and I've just ordered some new wires from my foam cutter, because I couldn't find them today, So, but I can get a lot of it cut without those just to do the main pieces and get the structure put together and then start working on the outside, getting that rocky texture going and I've got some filler and things like that I can use as well. When I get this painted, I'm also going to work on the terrain I've already got built. So I've got this like waste city, which I really want to use and go for the winter theme. And I've got these crystals at the bottom, which are going to be wintry. And then I'm considering using the other set of like you can see with the black pieces which I was going to use for more of a woodland look but I might use them for a frozen um, stage here as well just to get some extra terrain for this theme. What I've used before is some garage floor paint for this foam and I found this is a nice thick coat that goes all over it seals it in and then you can do anything you like to it and it's cheap you get a big tin for 20 pounds it lasts for ages you can do so much terrain with this so that's my plan I'm going to give all this a nice coat and then once I've done that, I can just use some spray cans over it and get it painted quite quickly. So it looks like a lot going on here, but, you know, a day of painting and this could pretty much be finished. But that garage floor paint does take a good 24 hours to dry. So I'll just be getting that painted, leave it a day, then spend um, another half a day, maybe just getting it dry brushed and sprayed. So I've got a busy four days to go, so I want to end this challenge in style and get as much of this done as I can within the time. be awesome if I can get this finished by day 30. And yeah, so tomorrow really is about building the main structure and then looking at the next day, getting those wires and being able to just do all the carving for the outside, getting the rocky structure all made. So yeah, really happy now to get on with this terrain, looking forward to making it. When I start cutting out the foam and making it properly, I'll do some videos and then make a video at the end where I cut it down to like 10 minutes, how to make the fang, something like that. So there'll be some proper construction videos for this at the end. And thanks again for following along with the series. We're nearly finished, nearly at the end. And um, so thanks for watching. Please like if you like it, subscribe for more videos like this. And don't forget to hit that notification bell to join me next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'd like to say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters who make these daily videos possible. And if you're interested in joining the community, it'd be awesome to see you there. And I'll put a link for that in the description down below.